Yeah. Better him was the 212. 212. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor evil act behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. God will only use a soldier he can trust. Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown to bear the cross, you must keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master. Help to bring evil and to spread good cheer. Great you'll be rewarded if your service here. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run nor evil act behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. To heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. I will praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the past of sin. With the shell of welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the fire. Line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor evil act behind. Oh, if you would win for God and the right, just keep on firing line. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you If we die fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor evil act behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. By the gate, begging the rich man for bread. Sores on his skin. Some said he's better off dead. And when that day came, Lazarus closed his eyes, carried by angels to Abraham's side. Okay. 
of the poor, the bruised, the broken like me. There is a hope for the desperate, the lonely, and the weak. There's a day coming, I'm telling you now, we'll trade all our sorrows for a There was a man named Jonah who lived in the belly of a whale. I believe that there's a beautiful heaven. Believe there's a burning hell. I believe that Moses led God's children all across the hot sand. When they came to the river, God parted the water and they walked across the dry land. I believe in the blessed hope, book in the blood, and there is no other way. Jesus is the Son of God and He's coming back someday. Where well, the Holy Spirit dwells within us, the Heavenly Father is above. I believe in the blessed hope, I believe in the book and the blood. I believe that Mary was the virgin when she heard Jesus was on His way. I believe if you'll look inside the lonely manger, you'll see God laying in the hay. I believe that Jesus died and was buried, arose upon the third day. I believe that the trumpet's gonna sound so loud, God's children will be called away. I believe in the blessed hope, the book and the blood, and there is no other way. Jesus is the Son of God, and He's coming back someday. Real the Holy Spirit dwells within us, the Heavenly Father is above. I believe in the blessed hope, I believe in the book and the blood. I believe in the blessed hope, the book and the blood, and there is no other way. Jesus is the Son of God, and He's coming back someday. Real the Holy Spirit dwells within us, the Heavenly Father is above. I believe in the blessed hope, I believe in the book and the blood. I believe in the blessed hope, yes, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the blessed hope, I believe in the book and the blood. Started out training for the Lord many years ago. 
say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. Well, he has offered everything that's got a name. All the wealth I want, a hey, worldly fame. If I could, still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Place of God's love. Silver and gold could never buy his love from above. Oh, hold up my soul, he chill. I begin to feel in his power. I can say, Praise the Lord, I wouldn't take another for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take another for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempt me and tried to turn me around. Offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, little worldly fame. If I could, still I wouldn't take another for my journey now. No, if I could, still I wouldn't take another for my journey. Nothing in the world can ever take a place of God's love. Silver and gold can never buy his love from above. Oh, hold up my soul, he chill. I begin to feel in his power. I can say and praise the Lord, I wouldn't take another for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take another for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey down, wouldn't you? Real good singing. I almost forgot it's good to have old Johnny Wayne back with us. He's been sick for a while, and we're glad to see him back here. Real good singing. It never gets old, does it? Satterfield boys, you have been called out to sing. I know that never happens, does it? <laughs> Let's go ahead and get behind them as they sing.
tell how much talent's over in that corner. Uh, them kids, I tell you, they do a great job. Appreciate, appreciate all of them. Chloe and all the good songs tonight. Appreciate them all. And uh, I know I pick on Jeff all the time, but he can take it. That's why I do it. If he couldn't take it, I wouldn't do it. But the uh, Lord knew what he was doing when he sent uh, Jeff and Judy our way and uh, Tom had to step up and become pastor because Debbie was retired and God sent in who we needed at the right time. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that, how the Lord works. Just amazing how he works. And it's good to have Monica with us tonight. I hadn't seen you in a while. Good to have you and your husband with you. I'm so thankful you come our way tonight. It's good to have you. You used to come here for years and years. Appreciate her and her family very much. If you have your Bibles, we'll be in 1 Kings. 1 Kings, all you Bible readers know this one pretty well. Etzel, if you don't care, get me a little water. They sung me pretty hard. So uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, begin reading with uh, verse 41. Very familiar text, but the Lord showed us a few things in here this week. And... Uh, I want, want to share with you what God has, has given us. And uh, Tom left about 2 o'clock. He, he called me, and he was on his way to get his dad because they was dismissing him right then. And he gets down there, and they don't dismiss him. So he's, but they are going to, I think, a little, yeah. Okay, they was just leaving about 10 till 7. So uh, 
Tom said, Dad's pretty aggravated because he wanted to be here tonight. And, uh, and he would have been. If he'd have been home, he'd have been here. That's just Ralph. And uh, devil's tried many ways to kill that man. But until the Lord's done with him, he can't do nothing. He can't, he can't kill him, can he? That's how that works. And uh, we appreciate Ralph and his, his life and appreciate the Lord watching over him once again. And uh, thank you, Eddie. Yes, sir. Verse 41 says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said unto his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. Be discouraging, wouldn't it? And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now that's an old familiar passage of scripture that we've probably heard preached on. We've heard Sunday school lessons about. We've, we've heard this talked about. But the Lord give us a thought this week and here's the thought he gave me. Keep on looking until you see something. Keep on looking until you see something. You know how many people has quit over the years that I have went here to church? My lands, we'd fill both buildings, the people that's come this way. We would fill both buildings. We would probably have to have two services on Sunday morning. I mean, it's amazing the people that has been saved at these altars that have came here but have, have either give up and quit or they've kept on looking until they found somewhere else to go. I don't know, but, but they're not here tonight, but we're here. But this is what the Lord give us. Keep on looking until you see something. Now, I want to give you some background here. In 1 Kings, if you go back to chapter 16 through 18, you will find out that Ahab was an evil king, a very evil king. He did more evil in the sight of God than any king before him. He and his wife Jezebel worshipped idol gods and built a temple of Baal at uh, uh, Samaria. And then in 1 Kings chapter 16, Jezebel raised up 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asher. She had the prophets of God killed. There was only 100 prophets remained hidden at this time. God sent Elijah to prophesy to Ahab that there would be no rain. And in, in 1 Kings 17, then God told Elijah to depart. While Elijah was hiding, God provided, provided him food and shelter while Ahab's kingdom suffered from a famine and a drought. Now, I'm just, I'm just giving you here, all you guys already know all this, but I just want to give you a little background. After three years, God sent Elijah back to Ahab. Elijah issued a challenge. We all know the great challenge in the Bible to Jezebel's prophets. And 1 Kings 18, what these fellas did is they called on their God from daylight till dark, cut themselves, beat themselves. You can read it. They done all kinds of things trying to get their gods to respond. But we all know tonight, even 20 or 2022, in the United States of America, we know that there is only one true living God tonight. We know that. They knew better. They knew that they were serving false prophets. They knew that they would not answer, but yet she took this challenge. She went ahead and challenged Elijah. Elijah said a prayer and called on the one true living God, and he answered by fire. 
Now, Elijah even soaked this, this altar, we all know the story, with barrels of water, and he filled, he dug a trench, and he filled the, the trenches with, with a trench with water, and God's power was so strong that he responded because if you read his prayer, and I read it again today, he asked the Lord to show these, these ignorant people his power. That's what he asked for. He didn't say it in that way, but that's pretty much what he was saying. And God showed off so much that he sent his power. Not only did he consume the bullock and the fire, but he consumed the water that was in the trench around it. That's how much power. He even soaked up all that. God sent fire that consumed the offering and licked up the water in the trenches. Elijah killed the prophets of Baal and instructed Ahab to prepare for rain. Now, true faith in God requires what? Obedience. Obedience. If, if you're going to use your faith, you better be obedient. And here's the thing that, that the Lord showed us this week. When we're obedient to God, we can live boldly with the expectation that God will move in our behalf. And I'm gonna repeat that, church. When we are obedient to God, we and we live, we can live boldly with the expectation that God will move in our behalf. Now you can think back on some times when you prayed to the Lord kind of boldly and you seen him move. You can relate to those, and I, I, I did this week. You know, there's a little poem written about faith. Someone asked faith this question. What are you gonna do when the river overflows? Faith answered, I'm gonna sit on the porch and watch her go. What are you gonna do when the hogs all drowned? Faith said, I'm gonna wish I lived on higher ground. What are you going to do when the cow floats away? I'm going to throw in after her a bell of hay. What are you going to do with the, when the water's in the room? I'm going to sweep her out with a swedge and a broom. What are you going to do when your cabin leaves? I'm going to climb on top the roof and straddle the eaves. Well, what are you going to do when your hold gives away? Faith says, I'm going to say, howdy, Lord, it's judgment day. Now, that's somebody living by faith there, ain't it? That, that's, that's true faith working. In times when there is no sign of an answer from God, we must still obey his instructions. And, and, and what I mean by that is this. We got to still keep doing what we know to do. We got to still read our Bible. We got to still pray. We got to still live our Christian life outside these walls. We got to still put a smile on our face. We got to still witness to people. We still got to do what we know to do. We got to follow God's instructions. At times, at times, efforts may seem hopeless or exhausting. That's when the faith of God gives us motivation to keep going and seeking Him with confidence that He will come through for us. We gotta keep looking. We gotta keep praying. We gotta keep believing. We gotta keep holding on to the promises of God that he's gonna come through for us. And I have never in my life, never, now I say this pretty boldly, I have never heard one complaint on God, somebody that's truly living for him wholeheartedly. Never. Have I heard that God has done them wrong or God has done anything wrong in their behalf, Bo? Never, never. After Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal, the stage was set for God to fulfill Elijah's prophecy of rain. The Bible says he went to the top of Mount Carmel. He sent his servant out to look for rain. Elijah was confident that God was going to come through for him, wasn't he? The servant went out and looked six times. And every time he reported back, nothing, Elijah, nothing. But Elijah was so full of faith and so full of confidence, he looked at him, Mike Boyd, and he said, you go one more time. Go one more time. He went, he went another time. See, he was now in the position where God needed him to be, to call on him. Elijah's faith was unwavering at this point. It was unwavering. 
You know, inside a cockpit of an airplane, just before takeoff, you can hear the pilot, the captain, or the co-pilot say V1. I didn't know what this meant until I found this little story. You can hear them say V1. Johnny Wayne probably knows what that means. V1 means the point of no return. See, as the aircraft speeds down the runway toward the end of the runway, the pilot has to know how fast of a speed to get to before he can get to a V1 place with that plane. Now, this takes a lot of calculating before the plane ever takes off. He has to include the air pressure, the temperature, the speed of the wind, and the weight of the aircraft. And when the pilot holds the throttle of the plane down and, a, and approaches that V1 speed right before takeoff, he wants to make sure everything is right because he can still abort. But once he speaks out V1, they're at the point of no return. That's exactly where Elijah was. He was not gonna take no other answer he was not going to do anything else. He was at a V1 point with his relationship with the Lord. And how many times, hey, hey church, if we can get to that V1 re relationship with the Lord where there's no point of no return, letting our Savior know that we're not going to turn back on him ever, no matter what comes our way, we're going to stay true and faithful to God. We can have a V1 experience with him. Hallelujah. That'll take us somewhere. Glory to God tonight. Elijah, Elijah's faith was unwavering. Every time the servant came back and said he saw nothing, he sent him again. Elijah's expectation was through the roof that God was going to move in his behalf. Finally, on the seventh trip, the servant come back and he said, I saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. And I got to thinking, Tanya, about this this week. How many times have you been praying for a loved one or especially a lost loved one and maybe you run into them and they're talking just a little bit different ever than they was when they talked to them a month ago. They're talking, they're saying things like, how's church? How's it going? You know, you've, you've had this to happen probably in your life. You're seeing that little cloud, that little man's hand, that, that little cloud out there, that little bit of hope. And whenever he come back with that, there wasn't no doubt. Elijah knew that the cloud was going to be turning, that the sky was going to turn black and the rain was coming. God's promise was on the way. And, and that's how Elijah, that's how Elijah carried out this promise. God used Elijah not only to deliver his word, but to prove his word. He could have sent rain without Elijah returning to Ahab. He could have sent rain without sending him to Mount Carmel. He could have sent rain without, without uh, uh, the man, the servant going seven times and looking. God could have sent the rain. But by following God's step-by-step -step instruction, Elijah made mockery of these idol gods and demonstrated the power, how powerful his true and living God was. When Elijah said there would be no rain, guess what? There was no rain. When Elijah said there would be rain, there was rain. We can stand up for the Lord every once in a while and believe in his promises and not be scared, Rhonda, and not be scared to proclaim some things. But a lot of times nowadays, we got so many doctors and so many things, we're, we're scared to proclaim anything. Shame on us. God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore is what the Bible says. We're belittling his power when we're scared to step out on his promises and claim some things. Not Elijah. He went against a whole bunch of bad people, 850 prophets, so to speak, Jezebel, and, and all the, and the wicked king. He went against them boldly, stood up boldly, knowing that the God he served would come through for him. And because he did that, he was able to have the power to say, rain stop, and the rain stopped. He had the power to say, rain come, and the rain come. Oh my goodness, how long has it been since you've proclaimed something for the Lord? When Elijah said, Elijah's prophesied by faith in God, 
not by what he saw. This is why God was able to use Elijah in a mighty way. He had the faith and the courage to stand on God's word. Do you realize tonight if only we had used our little bit of faith and muster up some courage inside us that we would be much stronger Christians than we are? If we would do that, it's, it's about like the bus driver. I might have told this before here, but don't matter, I'll tell it again. It's about like the bus driver. He was driving along his route and he pulled up and there was this hawk of a man got on the bus. Six foot eight, 350 pounds, arms hanging to the ground. He looked at this bus driver who was five foot three, meek little fella. He said, big John don't pay. He went to the back of the bus and sat down. This went on for days. And it was really bothering this bus driver. He was losing sleep over it. Every time he would stop and get this fella, he would get on the bus and he said, Big John doesn't pay. Big John don't pay every time. Well, it got so bad that this little bus driver couldn't sleep at all. So one day he went down and he signed up for bodybuilding classes, karate classes, and a self-esteem class. And he did all these things and he, and he, he done it all summer long and trained. Winter came and Big John started riding the bus again. He, he had it, he had the courage then, Tyson, because he had took these classes. He pulled up, Big John hadn't changed any, six foot eight, 350 pound, arms dragging the ground, walked up on the bus, he said, Big John don't pay. That little bus driver stood up, looked up at Big John. He said, and just why not? Like that. Paid off. He got some courage, didn't he? He said, Big John have bus pass. <laughs> that might have that might have been bad for this little fella, but it might give him a backbone, didn't it? Some of us need some backbone when it comes to, to, to God and comes to things to do for his, be busy about his business. We just let the devil run over sometimes. We lose blessings, we lose, we lose good things when, when we get that way. We need to have a little bit of backbone, stand up. The devil can't touch you. If you've had the blood applied to your life, they sing about it, they talk about it, there is a bloodline drawn around you that the devil cannot get in. He might be able to stand on the outside and, and holler at you and scream at you, but he cannot cross that bloodline. It's easy to become distracted from God's promises by life's up and ups and downs, ain't it? It is, it's easy. You know Jimmy Dean, the country music singer who ended up with the, the sausage maker? You know what he said? I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to reach my destination. I thought, boy, that's good. That's not letting life run over you. Theodore Roosevelt said, believe you can, and you're halfway there. Robert Schuller said, you know the great evangelist, the Crystal Cathedral? He said this, Tough times never last, but tough people do. Pretty good. Waddy Piper in his book, The Little Engine That Could, you know what he said? I think I can, I think I can, I know I can. We gotta keep looking until we see something. We gotta keep plowing, keep striving until we see something. Don't give up. Regardless of the changes that's around us, let's hold on to God because he's constant. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's unchanging. His word will stand when this world is on fire. Therefore, we can stand on his word. If he, if he spoke it, he will perform it. 
The word of God will always agree with what we see. Won't always agree with what we see, with the natural eye. By faith, we must remain obedient, even when we cannot see the evidence of deliverance. Remember this, Hebrews 11.1, 1, we all know this. We all know this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Now, I, I like people that listen to the preaching and mark up. Now, here's what, here's what I say. You say, oh, you know, you, you're always up there throwing things. How about you? Let me tell you something. Before I preach, I struggle with some of these things that I have to talk to the Lord about. I do, I'm being honest. The Lord will hit me just as well as he hits you. I mean, Brother Deb says like this, how he used to preach, and that's how you gotta preach. That's how you gotta preach. I ain't perfect, I'm far from perfect. But I serve a perfect Savior. And he knows that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he knows if I'm gonna mess up, he'll help me. He'll fix that, and we've got an advocate with the Father. But I like people that, that mark up. Now, here's the problem. A man Tom's talked about this for probably two years. We got a lot of barren altars. And I know that people say, well, I'll do something about it later or I'll take, you know, if I got hit tonight, I'll, I'll deal with it at the house. And that's good if you do. But I just wonder if you do. I just wonder if you do. I like, I like what I seen this weekend, Dad. Tom was either up here leading or he might have got done preaching. And he looked at Ryan Raider and he told Ryan, I can't wait for you to get your guitar and come and play for us. He took that home with him, prayed about it this week, and he brought his guitar today. Ain't that wonderful? I, I love that. I love to see, I love to see that. Here's what I don't like to see, and I'm gonna leave you with this tonight. Have you ever heard of the waddling ducks? You guys, I hope you don't forget this. The waddling ducks. Every Sunday, the ducks in a certain town waddle out of their houses down Main Street to their church. They waddle up in the sanctuary and squat down in their proper places. Then, the duck choir waddles in place and takes its place in the pulpit. When the choir is done with their waddling and their squacking, then the duck minister comes forward and opens up his duck Bible. And he reads this to them. Ducks, God has given you wings. With wings you can fly. With wings you can mount up and soar like an eagle. No walls can confine you. No fences can hold you in because God has given you wings. Now go and fly and be free like the birds of the air. You know what the ducks do? The ducks say, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they waddle out the door and waddle back to their house. Are you with me on the story? We hear it preached. We hear it taught, we hear it sung about, and we do nothing. We do nothing. We take it home and do nothing. I would be surprised. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. Can I be honest with you a minute? I wonder how many verses you even read in the Bible last week. Think about it. I'm not, I'm just being real here. Did you even open up your Bible last week? Something to think about, ain't it? I'm just, I'm just being real. I'll tell you why there's barren altars because they ain't sincere people. It's people that think that God's not, God's not gonna kick me out or God's not gonna do this to me or do that to me. Hey, I, you know the God I serve is also a chastising God. He will chastise his people and the reason why he does is because he loves you. Now here's the thing, you heard the word You've listened to the word. You've heard it preached around here for years. And if you're the one that keeps getting knocked upside the head, quit being like the duck. And waddle this way and come and take care of it. Amen. I'm gonna leave you with that thought. 
I thought that was pretty good when I read that this week. I said, I'm, I appreciate Ryan uh, Raider, right? Ryan Raider not being a duck. I appreciate that. Let's all be standing. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Jeff, go ahead and play something. You ain't done nothing all week, so come up here and play. Listen, if you need to pray tonight, won't you come? Seriously, won't you come? We ain't, we ain't here to judge you or look down on you. We're here to help you. We're here to help you. See, you get victory. Anybody at all need to step out and pray? Anybody at all? Help us, Lord. raised hand say Doug I don't feel like coming but I do need I do have a need need the church to pray for me anybody at all I see your hand anybody else anybody else want to be honest you know what one little move like this toward God does a lot for you it helps you it helps you if God's speaking to you anybody else anybody else want to raise your hand pray for me Doug I'll tell you what I seen this morning I was up here and Tom was done he was dismissing there was a young man back here that raised his hand he left it up the whole time the whole time that Tom, Tom was even dismissing and he still had his hand up and I, I thought on the way back through there you know you, you think well maybe he don't know or don't understand maybe he does maybe he's trying to reach what he needs you know we ought to be shamed. This is not this is not a shame thing. We're not here to shame anybody. This is here, we're all going to the same place. We're all trying to get the same victories. We're all trying to live good lives, right? It takes it takes some marking up sometimes. Think on it this week. Love you all. God bless you. Be careful going home. There's a lot of wet spots back through there. Those places will be froze over. So, no speeding, Miss Horsley. Hear me? <laughs> <laughs>